Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to part four of the Smart Repair Van Build. I forgot what I was gonna say then. <laughs> uh, I have found a button on my dashboard that said home. I pressed it and the van automatically took me to Wix's. <laughs> I've picked up some building supplies. We have a great big sheet of wood and some screws and some other bits to make the little box bit that I need to make to slide the gazebo in. Uh, today, we've also got a guy coming to fit Thatcham approved deadlocks on a van. Uh, I will try and film a little bit of that if I can. And I'm also gonna try and film uh, me trying to do woodwork, which is hilarious, because I am useless at it. But my mate Cy will probably jump in and help because he will cringe at me doing it wrong. <laughs> so we're gonna try and get that done. And then I've bought a load of brackets so I can bolt my shelving and my units in that I'm gonna use. Uh, and then, yeah, we can start moving forward with the inside of it um, and kind of go from there. We're also having a van remapped today uh, and Steve doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to try and film him uh, and go through the process of what happens and how he remaps a vehicle. Um, when he turns up, I'll force feed him coffee first and then sweeten him up and explain what's going to happen. He's going to get put on camera and he's not going to like it. <laughs> so yeah, um, possible footage of having some Thatcham approved deadlocks fitted. Not 100% sure on that. I don't know these guys. It's just the company I rang up. Um, we're gonna walk you through getting a van remapped. Um, my van, oh actually I'll save it for later, I won't tell you what power it'll make. Um, yeah, we're gonna go through the process of remapping the van and uh, then you can all laugh at my great woodwork skills and we're gonna try and build a box in my van. So when the box is done, we can then start installing all the rest of the stuff inside the van. So uh, yeah, when everyone gets here, uh, I will, uh, come back and start showing you what we're doing. See you in a bit. Right guys, the remap man's here. Um, you've probably seen him on my channel before, Essex Carbon Clean. They're an ECU remapping specialist. Uh, they do all sorts. Uh, he's currently plugging my van in as we speak now. Oh, <coughs> try and squeeze through. And he's got all these computer gizmos plugged into the van. Um, what you're currently doing now, you're reading all my yeah, ECU Yeah, so what we're currently map. doing now is we're currently reading the ECU. So it's gave yep. me your VIN number, your hardware, your software calibrations, yep. and that's what we look for. Yep. We take a copy of your base map, which that's is it. in kept. You store mine, don't I you? I do, that's yes. Right. Yep. Yeah, so if any time you want it put back to yep. um, original state, you can we can do that. Yeah. All right, so Steve, yeah. Steve's already done numerous of my vehicles before. Um, and like you just said, they actually take an original copy of my file, keep hold of that, and um, then they install their new file. So this process takes quite a while, doesn't it? It does, you yeah. You go in, read yeah, it all, we'll, yeah. and sort everything out that yeah. you've got to do, and then they send it off. So this is not your cheap generic maps. Um, there's loads of people out there that will come round with a little laptop, plug your van in for cheap and, and map it up. Uh, then they'll actually get rid of your original file and there could be problems. There has been numerous problems with people doing them cheap generic maps, isn't there, before? Yeah, so if you look on a certain site, you can buy yep. like 100,000 remaps for like £3.39. For, there we go, but yeah, it's a massive is, difference. Is yeah. They're not calibrated to the hardware and the software. Software, yeah. So you could have a 2012 vehicle, that's yeah. then you're putting hardware and software on from a 2009, 2010. 10, right. So it doesn't run right. It's no. not the right calibration so files. So when you do go and get a remap, make sure you're using someone that uses proper brands, um, like Auto Tuner, Dim Sport, Kez, all things like that. They can be mapped via the OBD, they can be bench mapped, and they can be like, um, Computer map, I suppose, booted, booted. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a boot map. Where you open up the ECU yeah. and you go into the ECU So this, like this map that I've opted for on here is a stage one map, um, which will take my van from 100 brake to 180 brake. Uh, 100 braking this is awfully, painfully slow. <laughs> Not that I want to race around, but unloaded going down the motorway, trying to get around lorries and stuff is a nightmare. So I booked Steve in to come and sort it out and give me a little bit more. But uh, I'm guessing, uh, am I right in saying that 
Mo they do different brake helps power models on a transit custom they're probably just detuned am i right yeah, is this so why this gives me so much more brake horsepower on this model isn't it yeah so what happens is um when they come out of the factory they detune yeah. the line with eu regulation yeah so all we're doing is we're just putting it back to how every manufacturer should be so Ford, so Audi, that's BMW, right blah, blah, and it just blah. goes to yeah. its maximum yeah all yeah. the stage ones are designed to be used with your standard engine components yeah. even the tolerances so yeah that's right it's only when we go to stage two it, and three yeah, we have to change yeah, stuff that's and, it, yeah you're starting yeah, yeah. To so, so stage so one's perfectly fine and it'll improve your economy uh, because you're not thrashing the hell out of it. I mean, uh, we, you, you can have an eco map put on or a normal map sort of thing. So that side of it is a hell of a lot better. Um, but yeah, be careful if you are going to go and have things mapped, make sure you go to a proper installer who's approved and they use decent software. Um, once he's finished reading his stuff and he does the next thing, uh, it goes off to, you have like a office that it goes to, is that right? And then they formulate my map for my vehicle and then it gets sent to you, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, so as I said, you know, what, what they look for is yeah. the right software and um, hardware and software. Software for files, this. For this band yep. and then they'll send it back to me. To you. The adjustments. Correct, yeah, and then it goes on. Yeah. So yeah, so once he's finished reading, doing what he's doing, it'll go to the office, then they'll sort it all out and send it back to him. So once he's at that stage, I'll come back and show you, all right? We've just had another YouTube superstar turn up. This cool little wagon. This car's filthy, but uh, very, very nice. If you haven't seen Rob's YouTube channel, then uh, I'll leave a link in the description. This is his little daily. There's some cool airbrush work on it. booked him in for a job um, to do on my van. Let me show you. Here he is having a brew. Say hello to the camera. How are you doing? <laughs> right, we've booked him in for some very special work on the Transit Custom build. What I'm doing is I'm having every single square inch of this airbrushed by him with a few tax man, <laughs> little, all over everything. <laughs> So uh, he's going to get to work now and he'll have it finished by lunchtime, all right? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, there we go. It's going to look epic. Right, guys, the map's been sent back over. He's got jump leads on. I did ask him what the jump leads were for. Um, it needs to keep higher than 12 volt going in to... Uh, is that to stabilise while you load yeah, the map? Yeah, is that to right? Stabilise the power while he's loading it up. So. Basically, he's ready to get his computer to install it now. Um, and I think it's a pretty quick process. There isn't really much I can show you. Or it's just doing computer stuff as we speak. 75, 100%. Yeah, it's nearly 100% already. So now Done. it's loaded the new file on the van. And that is that, I believe. Is that now on? That's that is, ready that's to it. go, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that is it. So the longest part of it was waiting for them to send the new map for my van over. Uh, obviously, like I just said, he put the leads on to increase it to above 12 volts. Uh, and that is it. We are mapped up and we're now, how many brake hooks are we now? It's gone from 100 brake up to 180. So we're now 180 yeah. brake. So that should make a massive difference to what it was to drive. Um, I will go and test it out a bit later on, but I've got other things to do. The lock guy's on his way now. Uh, so I'm probably going to wait. Um, and then we try and get some footage of the lock guy. So that is it, guys. Stage one shown complete. If you uh, in Essex or around Essex and you need a carbon clean or you want to remap uh, or you've got an issue with your mileage correction or diagnostics, carbon cleaning, he does it all. Um, fully, fully trust him. He's done all of our vehicles for a long time. Well, well worth looking up, guys. EssexCarbonClean.com give him a shout really nice guy and uh yeah get your vehicle sorted out if you need to uh, massive thanks and um we'll see you guys in a bit when a lot guy gets here okay so it turns out that the guy that installed the deadlocks kind of got his own firm but works for someone else and didn't really want to be on camera guessing this was classed as a pj <laughs> uh, uh we have faction approved 
uh, dead blocks in there now and obviously in the uh, back door all, it's actually a hook lock that hooks in apparently I mean I didn't go for the bolt locks because apparently they can get the bolt locks out quite easy um, you'll see there same again on the rear door nice tidy installation really actually happy with that um, there is also which I didn't know about there's an upgraded front door lock um, which I'm going to go for and there's some kind of I can't remember the name but there's some steel plates uh, apparently on these custom vans they drill out somewhere down here uh, to punch some kind of mechanism to get into your van you can have external plates and also internal plates um, I'm going to go for a set of internal plates uh, I can't remember the name of it but it's a bit like boron steel where you can't drill it. It's an absolute nightmare. Um, he's coming back next week to install the armoured plate in as such in the side door and in the rear doors. And we're going to go for this high security driver's door lock as well. Um, so pretty much I can't secure it any more than I am. Uh, it's having a Pandora alarm on a mobiliser fitted next week, which is a really good alarm and a mobiliser plus a tracker um, yeah I can only do so much obviously I'm insuring everything in it so if it does get stolen somehow or they manage to cut a hole in the side and rob everything everything will be fully insured um, just trying to find every single receipt for every tool I own which is a nightmare because apparently a lot of these companies want your receipts as they won't pay you out so you have to be careful if you are going to do uh, a build in, like, like a smart repair van or anything like that and you're going to insure all your tools and equipment you need your receipts as they won't pay you out i have receipts for three quarters of my stuff but quite a lot of my tools um are old i've had them for years and years so i haven't got receipts for absolutely everything i'm going to go and try and find invoices receipts for uh, spray guns pretty much all of my equipment that are going on here i'm confident i've got f yeah three quarters of the stuff but the other stuff i haven't i have to hunt about so make sure but as far as security goes i can't do any more once they've fitted the door lock on the front and put them plates and everything on here i can't secure this van anymore so that's that side of it done and i totally understand why he didn't want to be uh on camera i didn't have a clue um so the website the guys that i've run they actually work full time and do their bits on the side evenings weekends and whenever they fit you in i suppose <laughs> so i was like oh all right i won't film you <laughs> but yeah really nice chap uh, explained everything to me actually showed me and had some of the plate to show me he tried drilling it in front of me i was really impressed it weren't like a salesman thing i actually asked him about it because when he mentioned are oh, you going to have that lot i didn't know so that was good so we have other promising news so we are boxing in a box around here for my gazebo to slide in and out of and then once i uh, built the box across here and down there i'm then going to put compressor and dryer on top of it um, but like I said earlier in the video my mate Cy weren't having none of it which is good because he's like the woodwork king <laughs> and I'm useless so I'm waiting for him to get back he's just going to template a job and he's actually going to do it with me well I say help me but he's he's going to do it <laughs> so we're going to try and film that as well in a bit so once that's actually in then I can start putting the units in and the stuff that I'm going to use um, like this. I'm actually thinking about sanding the top of this, clean this up. Uh, not going to bother painting it. It's probably going to get knackered again. But I've gone through all of them drawers and them drawers are going to be more than enough for the tools that I'm going to take on board. And I'll probably still find, need to find homes for things in the van uh, until you start getting all your equipment in 
you're not going to know what you're going to need and what you're not going to need. Um, in all fairness, on the road, pretty much going to take a bumper off of a car at worst. If I'm repairing a snapped, cracked, split bumper, and I'll take a little bumper stand with me in the van. So realistically, it's socket set, trim tools, uh, and torx bits. Really, I can't see me needing much more tooling than that. But once it's in and I start loading everything in and working out what I do or don't need, you can go forward from there, find homes for everything. You know, might need more shelves, this, that, the other. But for the time being and not having a huge, huge budget to do this, um, we'll make it work. It'll be all right. Um, I've got the main ingredients, as they say, and all of the stuff that I do need doing. My paint scheme's turned up. Uh, I've gone for a Lechler, Le or Lechler, however you pronounce it. A uh, little 150 mil scheme. Lechler, I would say, is how I pronounce that. Uh, no flight cases anymore. Uh, these all used to come in little aluminium flight cases. I'll probably buy a case or a box for it to put all the tinters in. Uh, I did want to put some shelf up with them all in. Um, my mate's got like CNC and router machine and that and he could have made me in little holes to go in but apparently with the water base uh, it's best to take it in in the winter uh, anything sort of five degrees or below don't really want to leave it in the van so um, yeah we'll work around all of that when it's done uh, now I'm going to work out what I'm doing with electrics and stuff like that um, I've got some things on me, excuse me. Uh, on my watch list that I'm thinking about buying, I might put a fuse board in here and everything. Um, you pe people pretty much use like uh, a caravan electric sort of um, camper van electric system sort of thing with fuse board. I may be putting that in. A uh, couple of my powers, I just use extension needs, which is fine. I'm probably going to do that as well, um, but I am considering it. We'll see. But um, first of all, I want to start getting everything in, start working out what's going to go where and sort of go forward from there. So yeah, pretty long, but yeah, we'll get it sorted. So as soon as size back, hopefully we crack on with the woodwork and I'll give you a little update then. See you in a bit. Right, I've been sorting all the woodwork out. Um, what I've done is, as you can see around here, I've um, used this stuff from a tree, um, wood, uh, chip, but, uh, uh ply ply yeah ply and what i've done is i've cut, cut what's the word what oh sorry sorry yeah i've scribed all this round here myself right and um yeah it's starting to look really nice <laughs> we've got we, we've got the pro in the house it's uh, i'm only joking it's it's very dark outside it's quite late but we've got to crack on so i'm not going to feel much but we'll um yeah we're doing it i'll show you it as we go and uh yeah I told you earlier I'm no good with woodwork. I'll let him crack on, he's the professional. <laughs> uh, we've done a thing. <laughs> we have a box. Uh, we have a home for a gazebo. We've got a compressor up there. I've got a dryer around there. We've got some racking. Some toolbox. Show you around the other side. Another toolbox down. Uh, I've got it worked up that goes on that. Uh, all of the drawers open out properly. I can access everything in now. I've got my air dryer there uh, for the compressor. This is just sort of mocked up. We're not 100% sure on what way around everything's going to go. Uh, it's kind of like Tetris, trying to get everything to fit. But um, we're getting there. This is kind of what I had in mind to try and maximise the space on this side. It is very tight but I should be able to get quite a bit of gear in there. Um, we're on the right track. I want to use all this racking and stuff. I won this very cheap on eBay, so it was well worth having. It was a bargain. Uh, I'm going to get more than enough tools in them toolboxes and probably some stock and equipment. So yeah, well worth it. We're not 100% sure on the layout yet. Obviously the wheels can come off, we can bolt it down, but right now we're just mocking things up. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to cap the end of the box off, put more screws in and shrimp fillet and what have you, but it's pretty solid now. So looking pretty good. 
we're getting there and it's kind of a budget build really um you can sort of book your vans into a specialist and pay thousands and thousands but trying to do it ourselves uh and get it the best i can um i just want it usable and everything to have a home really uh so we are yeah we're on track we're getting there it is now nine o'clock at night i had enough i want to go home so uh there will be plenty more parts to come we've still got loads to do we've got a body kit wheels to fit to the van pretty it up have all the sign writing done and we've obviously got to make all this lot operational electrics airlines things like that um yeah so i guess i'm going to see you in the next part and uh call it a night so as always a massive thanks for watching and we'll see you very soon in the next one stay safe and be lucky